Hello and welcome everyone to WordCamp Connect. Woo! Woo! Thank you for joining us for this last panel of the day. And first, a little bit of background on what WordCamp Connect is. So you all know that this format is a bit different from regular panels. We are here with a panel of esteemed guests with unique perspectives and ample knowledge on the topic to facilitate an open conversation. You are as much speakers as we are. No one here uh, is more of a speaker than anyone else. This is a conversation for all. You are not only allowed, but encouraged to interject at any time if you have a personal story to share uh, on the topic. If you have a question to ask, just raise your hand. You will get a mic and you will be able to speak up. This is an open conversation for everyone to participate in on a number of community-related topics. And the topic of the day is how we can democratize opportunities and make contribution available to more people within the WordPress community to future-proof the WordPress project. And with us, we have a panel of esteemed guests, like I told, told before, who have encountered this problem uh, before in one way or the other. And I will let them introduce themselves. And we can start with Carol Ollinger, yes. who is partner manager at Yoast and has a lot of experience with mental health and well being. Carol, do you mind telling yes. us a little bit more about yourself and how you came into contact with this topic and how you developed an interest in this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. First of all, thanks for me to uh, for uh, thanks for me thanks for me to have me on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to you uh, for having me on the panel. Um, I got involved uh, with the WordPress community in 2016 as a non-technical woman. And what I noticed uh, in the very beginning is that this community has a special kind of allure. So I didn't look uh, to be involved in tech. I didn't look for new friends in my life, but I just found them. So this community is very inspiring, very passionate about what they're doing. And um, it attracts people not only to uh, become a member of the community, but also to become and to stay engaged. Um, but what I also noticed is that in some way it can be a little bit, uh, yeah, of uh, in, an intoxicating community uh, where it's very hard to uh, respect your own limits and uh, with all the passion and success stories and inspiring people that you meet, uh, you are easily um, drawn too deeply into uh, contributions and maybe at some point not seeing the cost of those contributions for yourself. And once you are engaged and once you develop your, your, uh, your own passion, that is when uh, you won't leave easily anymore. So that happened to me at some point, but I also draw a line um, pretty early for myself because I noticed that it had tremendous uh, effects on my mental health. So I stepped back from, from active contributions in 2018-19. So I occasionally, I'm occasionally speaking, I am occasionally helping in the background, but I am not actively contributing as much as I maybe wanted to in the very beginning. So that is my story. And since then, I am advocating for positive mental health um, and inclusion and diversity and so many interesting topics that <laughs> we still can do better as a community. So that's a little bit of my background. Like I am, I am very passionate about trying to help people to find their balance between their personal lives, their professional lives, because we all need to pay our invoices uh, in the end of the month, right? And uh, contributing to uh, such an amazing project. Thank you for that, and thank you for the work you're doing, because this is something that the project is heavily reliant on. We, we heard this earlier in the keynote, in the yes. opening keynote of this very event, and we have one of the keynote speakers, Juliet, with us. Uh, this project is uh, heavily dependent on personal contributions, and we have with us a business representative who 
has a uh, completely different perspective on sponsoring contributors and contributing from a business perspective. Karim, would you mind introducing yourself and telling us about how you came into contact with this issue and uh, how you developed your interest in this? Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Karim Maruki. Um, very proud to have a uh, WordCamp Europe come to uh, my original home country. <laughs> I hope you're all enjoying it. Um, so I had the pleasure of discovering WordPress in 2007. Uh, and I fell in love with it instantly as a concept because for years I'd been selling licensed content management systems to the enterprise. Spent my entire existence in the enterprise space. And um, in about 2010 or so is when I joined the team that helped decide to um, transition all of the Walt Disney Company from a closed source system to WordPress enterprise-wide globally. And the architectural challenges were immense. And at the time, trying to find enough experienced people in the community to help transition was a giant feat, which is how I met Alex King and I got involved working with Crowd Favorite um, at the very, very beginning. But it was a beautiful thing just to see how the community was coming together. As we progressed on this project over the years, there's been multiple efforts to bring the enterprise back into contributing, and there's been all sorts of challenges. As much as it's been easy for this group to get into the community and to take charge and help, um, it can be very intimidating outside. Now, I should, I should say the, the enterprise that I speak about has to do with sort of a lot of fortune companies and a lot of sort of organizations with multiple departments and business units, and they have a hard time understanding how to approach this model of community. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've seen a lot more success with some of the universities, even sometimes some of the, the, the publishers and some of the nonprofits. You see them more in this community, but if somebody's used to working in some of the organizations that we deal with a lot, it, it can be daunting. Um, and we're just trying to make it happen. And you see this every day in your current role as CEO of Crowd Favorite. Yes. And you also co-founded the uh, Scale Consortium. Yes. Right. Yes. So this is right up your alley. So Exactly. But especially because um, we, we saw a need with the Scale Consortium to try and market back out to the enterprise, not from an engineering point of view, not mm. from a pure open source point of view of, but what are the benefits for the different aspects of their organizations of using WordPress and open source? Because sometimes we get a little bit too caught up in releases and engineering and what's next and not focusing on how are they going to use it, not what are they going to use? So we're trying to give them a here's why and how you can use it, not a here's what it is. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. And with us, we also have a woman who wears many hats. <laughs> we do. None today. <laughs> not today. Me neither. <laughs> many imaginary hats. Um, Courtney Robertson, welcome. Hello. Do you mind telling us a little bit more about yourself and your current role, uh, roles, <laughs> <laughs> and how sure. you came into contact with this problem and what you are doing currently? Yeah. So I started using WordPress uh, 2.2, maybe? There was a number in there in the 2. Dot that, I, that didn't exist, and I came into WordPress right before that. Um, and then I was teaching in a classroom, high school business teacher was teaching and needed a blog. So I found WordPress after a few other CMSs. I then went to my first WordCamp in 2009. I failed to buy tickets in time. So from the <laughs> beginning, I was a contributor because the only way to get in was to volunteer to do something. Mm -hmm. So I was at the booth checking all the people in and met a lot of people that thought I knew something about WordPress, which was not true then. Um, Later, started joining the training team uh, in 2014. Have contributed periodically to the training team uh, throughout that time. 
I too have needed to step back from contributing for balancing just life for a season. So I was returning to contributing in mm, 2020. I had worked for the events calendar at a plug-in company, then I went back to teaching in a boot camp environment and I needed all the lesson plans that I helped to write because we wanted as close to the official source of curriculum as we could get at the boot camp where I was teaching. Uh, fast forward to right now, um, what do you do with a teacher and somebody that understands the development life cycle? Well, they become a DevRel. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these days at GoDaddy, I am a developer relations or developer advocate. Uh, I, I focus on more than just WordPress, but obviously WordPress is a big part. I look at open source holistically. And so the many hats that I wear have me telling my internal coworkers, hey, there is this thing that needs an update, please go look into that right now. Or you, I need a comment over in the core channel, come on in and leave the comments here about where the fonts should go or something like that. Um, but then additionally, I participate in releases. I often am running tests when we have a beta release coming out. Uh, I contribute to the training team some, but not much these times a little bit to Meta, and lately the sustainability team really has my focus, mm -hmm. which is very related to what we're doing now. The sustainability team is focused on three areas, economic, social, and uh, environmental. And so that social component specifically, I've been working on an initiative, uh, getting data and metrics as much as we can to synthesize the amount of contribution. You know, we go to meetings in Slack, Gosh, wouldn't it be fun if that counted towards when we're evaluating our, how we're contributing, like any points of data about the work that we all do, synthesizing that together and then being able to tell a story out of that data. Um, whether you are a team in WordPress and you need to say, here is the work that's being done and what needs to be done. If you are an individual that is sponsored, wants to be sponsored or does not want to be sponsored, we have all of those. Organizations like my employer, who do make it possible for us to contribute to WordPress, helping to advise on our strategy about further contribution, uh, and then project leadership and what data they need to know about the contributor base. And do we have the contributor base so that the future of WordPress is strong for the foreseeable future? And how are we growing the newcomers mm -hmm. into the community around contribution? So. Yes, I wear many hats, sometimes a pirate hat, like in my profile photo, uh, just not today. <laughs> right, thank you for that, Courtney. <laughs> and uh, thank you for your expertise. Uh, as uh, every panelist here has mentioned, we all have experience with contribution in one way or the other, and some of us come from a more privileged position than yes. the other. I'm one of them, I'm fully sponsored by my employer as well, and I'm very lucky to be sponsored, but uh, from what I understand, uh, not everyone has the same opportunity, which yeah. we're here to discuss. So what I would like to ask is, is there anyone in the audience who has experience with contribution, seeking contribution, or not getting contribution funding that you would like to share? Yes? We'll get into that. Hi, uh, my name is Birgit uh, from Germany, and I'm also a long-term contributor to uh, WordPress. I had some opportunities to uh, was get sponsored by an employee uh, employer, but in the meantime, I'm freelancing and uh, funding my time myself. Uh, sometimes I felt lucky to get some travel assistance funds, um, but I had to apply to that. Uh, but I'm working in a field in the WordPress community which is not that popular by companies to get interest into sponsoring because I'm working in the diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging working group and it is really difficult to justify expenses or sponsoring for those types of works which is not that um, measurable for a data gathering because it contains a lot of conceptual work and um, brain work and um, talking to people, cross connection, and it's difficult uh, even to find funding on a part-time uh, amount. I'm not looking for a full-time sponsoring. I'm just looking for some support to work on, for instance, a contributor handbook just for the next couple of months to, to do my work without um, juggling my time around with 
maybe cl getting client projects or neglecting, as Carol also said. I'm one of the person, I'm so passionate, I sometimes forget to um, make a living <laughs> with my work instead of um, yeah, and prioritizing my work. So is there any ideas, uh, Karim, I would love to, to hear your thoughts on that. Um, what do companies need to, to get the point to decide about funding an individual contributor or like Courtney, you're running the WP Community Collective. What does it take to get someone on board to find funds? Oh, uh, Go first. All right. Thank you. Um, so it's been our experience that when we engage with some of our clients, a lot of them say, okay, we have an army of people on staff already. Let's test something out. Baby step number one, how could somebody we have already on payroll contribute? Mm -hmm. There is no set process to welcome them at the moment. This is a long answer, so I'm gonna cut it short and I'll go into details if somebody asks, but whether they're technical or they want to do any sort of testing or anything else, um, content even, it doesn't appear easy and there's no process to get involved where the manager of a department within a corporation can say, here's an ROI Mm -hmm. But not here's an ROI as in what are we going to get out of it money-wise. Here's an ROI of how is that manager going to tell their manager yeah. the resource below them had time that was worthwhile other than they're contributing to open source. One of the conversations we've been having is that, you're going to hear it in a second, but that dashboard, that idea, that reporting, Another thing is the cash contributions, we'll get into that, but really the first baby step they said is, I'm not going to write a check until I understand what's left. And there's all sorts of conversations at different open source projects and different teams about, especially for the enterprise, having a tithe back to the project. I support that. Um, but that also gets complicated. So it starts with this community helping creating an easier path and a clear path to somebody outside the community of how to do that. You know, we joke about the onboarding of yeah. WordPress when you first turn it on. What about the onboarding of getting into the community, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so one of the hats I didn't mention is WP Community Collective. The website is the WPCommunityCollective.com. Today, I share with, with Birgit that uh, there is an incentivizing DEIB initiative that was launched this morning, ta-da, um, <clears throat> that will help get <laughs> folks funded uh, in various forms. And a lot of that came about because I saw when Birgit posted, oh, hey, I'm a table lead and here I am trying to find funding to get to lead the table about the initiative. And I know how important diversity is in the project because I was one of four women at the first WordPress conference that I went to. And it matters to me to have more women visible in the project, more diversity overall, right? So as I look back at that experience, I was really timid. Yes, I checked everybody in that day, but I was really timid. I think Brad Williams had hair and sat in front of me at the time. Um, <laughs> and if anybody knows Brad from WebDev Studios, you know he hasn't had hair in some time. So, um, hi Brad. Uh, <laughs> but, but aside from that, you know, uh, this is uh, the WP Community Collective. Milana called it out last year during our Q&A time with Matt. Um, contributors need to stop funding each other. And we need to do more to help contributors be funded. So I also looked around and part of my job is at GoDaddy, we sponsor some people that are full-time as staff. Kira is here as one of those. Thank you very much, friend. Uh, but we have a couple of other people that we sponsor, specifically in the WordPress space. And Kira and I had to go to our CEO directly, repeatedly. Uh, not to say that our CEO is not listening. The fact that our CEO cares enough to listen to us about this is significant. And to understand why, historically, there were others before our CEO, other CEOs, before my manager, other managers in similar roles in this company, 
and the challenges that were faced to try and get that unblocked. It is in our developers leveling guide to even contribute to open source as a career progression. That's the developers. What about everybody else that's in the division related to WordPress? Or what about open source holistically, right? Not just WordPress. And so I then took, I, I adore Juliet, by the way. I, I took the situation that was going on with WPCS, where this was not being maintained without funding, and said red alarm and started escalating that. And then that snowballed into PHPCS, which is, WPCS depends heavily, entirely on PHPCS and said, you know, it's not just WordPress that's at stake or this plugin, that plugin, whatever. It is the whole of anything using PHPCS and let's look at what we're offering in our plans. So I had to make a very clear business case for some of this, but I also looked at the challenges where we can't just write as a company checks out to a bunch of individuals. That doesn't work. Uh, it, it just, for when you get to a company of that scale and size, it doesn't work. Small companies, I've worked in small companies before, they can do it and they can pivot really easily. But when you start dealing with budgets that are set a year in advance, you don't get that opportunity and you have to be very explicit about where the money goes. So putting money in an envelope and sticking it in the mailbox doesn't happen. That's also part of the impetus to start the WP Community Collective because with that, we can open it up so that organizations can contribute by means of the WPCC through a nonprofit approach. And it does not have to be just my employer, though thank goodness my manager supports me so thoroughly and my employer is part of that initiative. Um, through that, we're funding speakers at all of the flagship camps for the next year. Uh, but there are other opportunities that abound. And part of what the WPCC would like to do eventually is to help uh, the organizations that struggle with how to onboard their own staff. So Kira and I have been mentors in the WordPress project to onboard new contributors. But how do we onboard when organizations would like to send mm -hmm. their staff in? How do we onboard those folks? And do they come in in an ongoing way or do they come in for a sprint if you're yeah. in the dev system, you might come in as a sprint and say, I'm going to do the thing and then it, when I know that our schedule is slow and then I'm out. Yeah. So there's a lot of considerations that go into this. I don't know if that opens up more worms or not. May, may, may I add one last thing that I might not have been clear on? I did not mean to go around your question about getting funded because as you just said, if we can onboard the organization and they start seeing that ROI, then the next step is to say, okay, my people are busy, yet it's easier to write a check, right? Mm -hmm. So there's different things on the agency level we're doing, right? There's a few of us uh, uh, with the Scale Consortium. Part of our MSA, our Master Service Agreement with our clients is they don't have work product ownership over anything. Therefore, we are contributing back the actual libraries of code from the entire project. We're making it available so that if there is something that can be cherry-picked, it can be cherry-picked. But there's no way to right now to submit a really cool project we might have done for Mega Corporation X and have it taken a look at, so to speak, because we're on the ticket system only at the moment, right? And, you know, the, the roadmap, yada, yada, yada. So there's all sorts of things that could happen, but that first step is getting that onboarding, which is why Birgit's work is so important, why it's so important to get the communications out there. Sorry, I didn't, yeah. I'd like to add something about onboarding. I also think that it should start with onboarding new companies into our community. So I, um, I've been seeing a lot of, um, minor or major issues with, with companies that would show up for the very first time at a WordCamp that wanted to become involved and did not have the right guidance maybe um, in understanding what, what this community is like and what community gatherings are like um, and then just made a mistake which immediately turned out to become a big drama and then these companies already burned their uh, reputation at the first try. But there was maybe a big potential for them to become engaged on a deeper level and maybe also become uh, involved in funding contributors. So that's a, a big issue that I see and it also brings me to, I think the most important thing that I wanna, uh, that I wanna say on this panel, there's a noticeable gap between the community that we all love and the business world. And 
I truly believe that if we manage to build those bridges between these two major players uh, of the WordPress project, there's so much opportunity there to make all the contributions more sustainable. Um, and it starts with WordCamps. Like I personally, I would love to have a business track. So all the people that are coming here that, that are like, hmm, I see this as 100% of a community gathering, that's totally fine. So you don't have to go to a business track if that's not of interest for you. But if you have the opportunity to come in touch with the big players of this industry and to find out what and how they see the community and how you can become involved with them. And when we start having open and transparent conversations, that is actually democratizing opportunities because all these business conversations are already happening, especially at flagship events, only it's mostly the inner circle that some of us are fortunate to be a part of Very that true. are actively involved. Very true. Going to speak to uh, looking beyond WordPress uh, in the open source project. My employer, GoDaddy, sponsors and was a founding sponsor of the JavaScript Foundation, openjsf.org, and that pulled together Node and jQuery and all of these sub-projects to be one foundation. Uh, and that sits within a Linux Foundation entity. And people don't know that about us. Uh, it's really easy, or it was really easy, <laughs> when, when it was being created for my employer to see the value of that. It is very explicit on the JavaScript Foundation what you get for your contribution, whether that be labor or money. It was very explicitly laid out what you get for that. And I think that in WordPress, we would do well to learn from other open source projects yep. that um, have been explicit about the value of it. I support the idea of Five for the Future. Um, I may have a personal quirk about calling it a tie that brings up some connotations, et cetera, but I support that idea it, that anyone that is profiting off of this stuff should look at, and to Juliet's point this morning, uh, I, I support looking back further in the chain. You've got WordPress, what is WordPress dependent upon? It's got all of these other open source projects that mm -hmm. it depends upon to exist. I think that WordPress, the project, needs to do better at communicating with the things we depend upon and fostering that relationship, but also learning from a lot of those places where we say, well, why is it easier for organizations to understand the value of contributing to this, but yet it's muddy in, in WordPress about why and how, and mm -hmm. right? We need to be more, more detailed about that. Juliet had a question, yeah. You good? <laughs> All right. <laughs> we will come back to Juliet later. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. And here we touched on two very important things. We seem to see the problem the same. And if you go to the community booth, for example, we have a little experiment going on. We asked people to uh, mark their location on the, m the world map. We gave them two colored of dots. If you are a contributor seeking sponsorship, we ask them to use a red dot. And if you are just an attendee, uh, please use a green dot. The map is a lot more red than green. Hmm. So we do see the problems the same, and we have touched on a few uh, important root causes. So uh, I'm happy that there is, we're reaching more and more consensus about this. And to go back to these root causes, I would like to bounce it back to you, Karim, because we were talking about different incentives for companies to mm -hmm. sponsor individuals, right? Carol, you mentioned something very important here with marketing in incentives. Mm -hmm. But if we look beyond marketing, what do we have? What can we do as a community? What can we do uh, in our individual teams? or the way the project is set up right now, to incentivize businesses to see the business value of contributing to WordPress. Okay, so um, I love this morning's quote mm -hmm. of open source is not free. Yeah. And um, thank you so much, Courtney, for reminding me of that uh, before we got on stage because um, one of the principal slides that our organization uses when we're um, competing against one of those monolithic platforms or a publishing system out there. Um, one of the slides is basically um, how much less 
maintenance of open source costs than licensing of monolithic systems, right? We try to explain that to them because we're not saying that you install it and you're done and we're going to move on. The, please. The original quote, we only used part of it this morning, is open source is not free. You are just not the one paying the price. <laughs> I love yep. it. It's true. Very true. It's true. Um, th so what we try to do is we, we try to explain to them that part of the process of the, the maintenance of your particular installation is to understand what you're changing about it and through those ideas of what we do with the MSA and other things, some of those things might contribute back to the project. But what could you do to contribute to the project, right? I'm not sure what the exact example is. Um, I'm not, I, I know there's been a lot of success around trying to bring light to it in some of the university projects, um, but it's, it's hard. It's hard to figure out how do we walk them from they understand that they have to pay for maintenance to if you add on a price, does that price go directly to funding a freelance contributor? Does that price go into how do we bring on board a, a existing resource a company might have so they get a feeling for it? Because if that price go to paying for tools like the tools needed to collect all the data. That's a cost that the project would have to absorb. Right, well, yes, <laughs> yes and. <laughs> um, it's about showing success. If we can show that b first baby step of success of, oh look, they contributed, uh, they contributed an edit to an open document that Beer Get Started, and there was recognition of that, that it doesn't have to be on social media, mm -hmm. but at the next release, there's a thank you from so-and-so at this company for this. They can show that back to their manager, and their ma here's the key point, and their manager shows it to their manager. Because in these organizations, that's what it's about, right? I would encourage us to also not only tie it to releases. Certainly, if it's properly release-related, then yes. There is so much work in this project that for instance, the DEIB area, I could see a little bit of relation to releases, but on the whole, maybe not all the time. True. But I think just that acknowledgement to what you're saying, absolutely true. And having that reporting mechanism back and forth would be really valuable. Yeah. Um, there's something I, I want to add. It's just a question that I, I have in my head for a very long time already. And I feel that sometimes as a community, we are doing a terrible job when it comes to setting the, the right expectations. So for example, the DEIB initiative is right down my alley. I deeply care. But I, I am also aware that for many companies that, don't, that are really, really chasing the return on investment, and Birgit already mentioned it, it's not measurable. So do I like that? I don't. But that doesn't change the reality that most of the businesses out there have not understood what, for example, Juliet said earlier today, that they should see investment into open source in general as an insurance so that their business can continue. It means that they want to see the numbers. And at the moment, the reality is if you want to get like part-time or full-time funding for something that you are working on this project, your chances are considerably higher when it is in an area that is more visible. Again, I'm not saying I like that. I'm not saying that is how I want this project to work, but it's, it is the truth. And I feel that we are not taking the best care of ourselves and of the people around us that we respect and sometimes have friendships with by not telling them the truth, like, please do not continue to do the same thing every day and expect a different result. At the moment, the truth is, it's hard to find fundings for invisible areas. And yeah, <laughs> it's interactive. Please and some of those invisible areas are things which people don't realize are really important, yes. like security, where people can't even talk about what they're doing. Yeah. Oh. 
That's a good call. That's a good call. But how, um, how would you, uh, f for this specific example, like, do you see, uh, do you see a solution there? If they can't talk about what they are doing, like, is there, is there any way about raising awareness? Would that be, again, like, for example, taxes, like what, what Joost uh, uh, suggested? That, that would be a solution for that problem, wouldn't it? Or do you see a different one? It, it hooks into the anything that just works only works because someone puts a shitload of work in it. And when a project is invisible, when some role is invisible, it's because people are doing the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And re recognizing it works. that yeah. is something which is not easy, but it is essential mm -hmm. to get the funding sorted. And I think Aaron might want to add something to this. Do you? Please do. <laughs> yeah, we're all helping each other. I love that. Uh, I was dying to ask <laughs> him a question Jordan? earlier. Yep. Hi, my name is Aaron Jorben. I am Hi. a core committer. Um, I've also led the last uh, handful of security releases in WordPress. I'm independent developer. Um, funded via GitHub. Uh, last month, I made $25 an hour to ensure that WordPress stayed secure. Let's clarify, I'm funded by GitHub. Who, uh, is GitHub, GitHub writing you a check? Uh, GitHub sponsors. Thank you. Um, individuals. Yes, uh, yeah. through individuals. Uh, about 15 individuals are funding my time right now. Um, and my work in this area cannot be public. And in fact, if I am doing a good job, it is incredibly invisible. Mm -hmm. um, and if I am not doing a good job, it probably directly affects the bottom lines of two, if not all three of your companies. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, how do we make sure that this work is funded? Well, uh, on the one hand, I will be taking, I, I, it's on me to take some information back about what I did, why it was valuable to send me to this event, so I think sharing the replay with a couple of key stakeholders will be part of that. And I've got yeah. my next two level of managers in the room with me um, to help me make the case for those instances for sure. Um, I absolutely want to support furthering that work. Yes, may. we're gonna talk some more, Aaron. It, <laughs> if, I, if I may. Um, I've, I've known Aaron for years, we've had a few conversations, but um, here's a commitment I can make. If we can put together a presentation of past, now non-relevant instances where that's made a difference, I am willing to make that part of the, rep the, the presentation publicly when we are pitching WordPress against these other systems. and through her organization, the, the I'm WPCC? sorry, WPCC, yeah. thank you, through the WPCC, through conversations that many are having about an enterprise tax, other things, those things can be routed. Because I just want to call out again one more time. He said 25, not 250 an hour, 25 an hour. And, and that is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Okay? So as, while, as an agency, I can't write a check at the 10 times rate directly to you and sustain my bottom line. It's my responsibility to help with that, and so should the others. So finding out about that, understanding how can we mm. make that and communicate it effectively, because I don't have access to social media or TV commercials, but I get invited to rooms where we're presentation, presenting against you know, the, the big bad AEM and other things, that's the perfect opportunity to yeah. say, look, let's explain the difference one step further than what we have on the difference between free and somebody else is paying for it, right? I support that, so let's have a conversation. I think also what I would like to call for in the project, I know um, Birgit is working on a, a side project, a directory of those that wish to be sponsored. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that Aruba, many of us know Aruba in the room. It's great to walk into a word camp in a country that's not mine and feel like you're all friends. Yeah. I can't tell you how great that is. 
Um, those are some areas, but honestly what I really want to see is a way of notating this in your WordPress profile. I know that um, a dear friend of mine, Scott Clark, who is lead dev at Pods, opened up a uh, place on their GitHub profile to receive funding, and one of the major car companies, I forget which one, but just decided to, to their funding of open source, just scattered their funding of open source. And so Scott Clark receives, I think, $10 a month from some organization. Um, Scott can correct me on the exact details of this, but it's like a, it's a minimal. But I would like to, instead of having to know someone, instead of me having to continually go find, and I, I love to do this, please know, I love people. I love to know people and to help people in all of the things, DevRel. Uh, so I also would like something at the project level, maybe on our profiles, that you could opt in yep. and say, I want full time or I want part time. Here's the area that I'm doing. And then I would want you to have some data, what could be available. So for those that can't have hard metrics, I'm still proposing along the way as we build out these dashboards of manually logging some things. And it doesn't have to be like, here's the security bug that I was in the group chat with. And so and so. No, but just like security work, da, da, da. And then sort of tally up for things that can't be tracked, things that must be hidden for reasons. Or it's just simply that your job is to read and research and think a lot. You know, to be able to have some tracked metrics like that so that when you want to go make the case, maybe toss that behind your, fi your individual five for the future listing so that it would be private enough, but you would have a source of data for your own purposes uh, to be able to then go t to individuals and say, and then also call in the five for the future companies and say, here are the ones you either need, here's what the teams need and or here are the people that are already doing the work and saying that they're open to be sponsored and do that within the project. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what uh, Courtney said goes back to that inner circle also that I mentioned because it makes a difference if you can, for example, show up at WordCamps or if you are in the right time zone that for uh, specific Slack channels you are able to show up when decisions are being made, which reminds me of one of the principles that I am not so much a fan of in this project, with, which is decisions are made by those who show up. I said it on several occasions already. I, I'm not so certain that this is how decisions are made in this project to start with. But the other thing is, how privileged has one to be to be able to show up? Like there's so many factors uh, that, 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 that come in that, yeah, like for example, you have to earn a life <laughs> besides contributing. You might have a family, you might be neurodivergent or have language barriers, which makes it so much more difficult to, uh, to make sure that you are gonna be heard. And what, what if you can't show up? Or what if you feel that you have to show up when you actually can't because the time that you're spending on that is just uh, uh, not going towards your house or your family? So um, yeah, this, so that's why I love the, 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 the project that, that Courtney is currently working on and what Birgit is doing because in the end, uh, democratizing, opportunity, uh, democratizing opportunity means that uh, we have to have access um, to those and open and transparent conversations that go beyond uh, the privileged ones that can actually um, show up in person or online when it seems to be important. Can I share a, a personal story in the process? Erin, I think it was New York 2014 Contributor Day that I joined the training team. I have a photo that's really blurry I wandered across town, then pregnant with my second. I had already lost a baby. I went home later and found out that I was losing that one too. I was intimidated as all could be with a lot of personal stuff going on. And I was sleeping on the couch of a friend where I had to take a train an hour to get into the city to get there that day. I used to be intimidated to not know anyone that was talking about core things. Um, I think I got the guts up when I saw you wearing a hockey jersey to say hi once. <laughs> I've only worked at GoDaddy for three years. I've loved those three years. When I was contributing, I had three miscarriages. There was a lot of personal toll. And I'm grateful somehow for 
all of these experiences because I will never forget why it matters that we fund contributors, why it is that we do the work that we do, why it is that I'm really glad now that I'm not intimidated to say hi to Aaron and admit, here's how much code I do or don't know, but you know more, so please help. <laughs> um, code's a little bit of my job. I need to speak enough about it to know what I need to know. Um, but it's the people that makes this all possible. And we're the people that are powering 43% of the web. And I saw this week that it's growing again. Just a little bit, but it's growing again, according to the same source. <laughs> so it really matters. And I will do everything I can, as you can see, but there will come a point where I cannot do it all. And yeah, I should not do it all. No, you're absolutely right. You should not do it all. And that experience that you've had, I am terribly sorry for that. And I wish it did not happen to you. And I wish that it does not happen to anyone else. Absolutely. I also have two little ones now at home this week that I'm hoping to start bringing to camps. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. I have mine in here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we need next generation. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <Rather> myself. <laughs> on that note, I hear that we have, we're facing transparency issues. We're facing transparency issues uh, for the businesses, for those who uh, ultimately fund the whole project and the people who make the project. So I would like to ask you in the audience if you have any ideas on how to increase transparency, even the, the smallest change it matters. So what can you do in your make teams? What can you do in your site projects that you're working on? Any ideas at all how we can better connect businesses and the value that the people of this project deliver? So the people, the, the companies who are within the Five for the Futures, uh, when they are within the Five for the Futures, they could get like a badge or something that they can put on their websites where it says we are contributing to WordPress or we are making WordPress possible or something like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good marketing initiative. <laughs> And about that, Carol, you have some ideas around marketing initiatives. Um, yeah, I, I mean, those are more tied to uh, WordCamps because that's more my area of expertise <laughs> where, um, where I think that the conversations can start happening more transparently. So I mentioned it earlier. Um, I believe that if we are starting to destigmatize the topic of money, please, let's do that. Um, because th th in the end, it all ties back to money, right? I mean, instead of paying uh, uh, with your time, you should be able to get a uh, financial, uh, yeah, that you have the financial uh, safety and uh, yeah, feeling, feeling, feeling good about what you're doing and also being able to pay the bills at the end of, your mo of the month. So I, I still feel that we as a community are not doing the best we can to build the bridge to the, to the, to the business world from our end. Um, so when we have these gatherings, when we have these big flagship events, there is so much opportunity in bringing the businesses and the community together and have conversations about the business topics so that we can start understanding what the companies need so that we can determine the return on investment or the insurance case and in an ideal world, bringing those together. But to be able to do that, there needs to be a safe place for that. And at the moment, and please, in the audience, this is interactive, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm ready to learn. I personally, I'm not feeling that at WordCamps yet. And I'm not saying that there shouldn't be like 100% community gatherings. But the flagship events, they are already commercial and business-centric. And again, it's just a part of us that is at the moment um, able to grab those opportunities. So, for example, the business track. I would love to see um, a business track over two days where we could bring in the hosting companies together and we would give them the opportunity to bring on stage what is important for them. 
And then we would bring them together with the community and we could also discuss with the hosting companies, just to name those, what is your incentive, what would be your incentive to become more involved? And there were also f uh, uh, pretty good suggestions earlier this morning uh, in, the, in the first session. What, would, what could be your incentive or how could you help uh, with what you are doing in your business to raise fundings for contributors? And then we do, for the next three hours, we invite the plug-in companies and do the same. And then we bring in the agencies, maybe also talk to the publishers and bring the agencies and the publishers together as our WordCamp. I would love to see that. So there is much potential there. And again, this doesn't mean that we are completely changing the character of what WordCamps are, because nobody's forcing anyone to go to a business track if that is not your alley. Right. Just like uh, nobody's. A quick uh, tag off of what Carol sh shared. A few of you in the room know Tara Clays. Uh, Tara and I were hanging out on the back deck at the beach last summer at her house, because where I go to vacation is close to her family home. Tara shared with me, after I had subcontracted and things for her, I shared with her about what I was doing with the WPCC, and I, please know, I am not receiving funds from this. This is just, this is extra. This is not my go daddy time, either. This is extra time. So through the WPCC, Tara saw, oh, you want to fund somebody part-time to contribute to accessibility in the WordPress project? I would certainly, on an annual basis, pay a premium license fee, like an agency-level premium license fee I would be willing to donate that once a year. So even when we're dealing with smaller agencies, I mean, Tara has quite a few clients that she is maintaining their websites, and usually a half dozen or so active projects in flight at some point. But that idea that even at a small business level scale, you know, there's ways of helping to fund contributors through that process that still would be valuable to their business. And mm -hmm. I think helping to educate others on that is really important. Tara's great. Folks should meet her if they can. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a. <coughs> oh, there's a question. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just want to call out a few things. These these are not the only solutions, but I think this is a multifaceted subject, and I think there are a lot of things that are already in motion that can help convince leadership of larger companies to contribute funding to contributors. Um, one of those things, and, and I apologize if this has already been surfaced in other talks, one of those things is to perhaps consider stop calling word camps word camps. Use the word conference. Because if you think of, I'll, I'll challenge you all to remove yourselves from the WordPress community for a moment. And think of yourself as someone who is a traditional um, a salesperson or business person, a VP of a company who has only been to trade shows where it's all about scanning badges and making deals and selling things. Um, <clears throat> and they have no concept. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying my particular leadership does, but um, many people have no concept of community like we all understand it in the WordPress space and what the importance of, of this community is. So when we come to uh, 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 our leadership and we say it's important to fund this part of the project because the immediate question is what is the ROI on that? What do we get back like Karim and, and others on, on stage have mentioned? So uh, people like uh, Courtney and Carol and, uh, and others, we, m we have to make a business case and turn or translate what we all know to be important and true into a financial business case and an ROI on what it means mm -hmm. uh, and what the cost is for not uh, contributing to yep. a project. So um, there was more I wanted to say, but I don't want to talk too much. But <laughs> it's, I think it's a little things about changing perception uh, of what word camps are, um, especially flagship events. Yeah. Uh, because they hear the word camp, they go, camp, okay, that's not a conference. It doesn't sound as professional as what I'm used to uh, hearing and going to. Um, and it also comes down to uh, people within these larger companies 
uh, continually advocating and making these business cases. Um, in our case, we very specifically ask uh, leadership to come to these events. Uh, we set up meetings, we um, educate, educate, educate um, about the importance of open source uh, in general, the WordPress project specifically, uh, and it's something that we continually hammer on. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful to anyone else here, but um, it, it, it's about translating, it's about perception first, and then the cost of, of not yeah. uh, being involved. Everybody. I think I would just like to add one sentence to what, uh, what um, Adam just said. I would also recommend everyone who can to grab the opportunity to walk outside of our bubble occasionally. Like there's other events out there. Um, so it can be other open source communities. It can also be uh, commercial events, Cloudfest to name just one. And just go there, dip your toes, see what it's like, take out what you like. Don't, don't imitate what you don't like. But it is always going to be uh, a big win to just broaden the horizon and, and, and see what else is out there. And I find it sometimes, yeah, I don't know, a little, a little limiting when you, always, when, when you only see uh, WordPress events. Mm. So I'm here from a non-WordPress community, the Type of 3 community. And uh, well, I was, uh, Welcome. Yeah, I can stand up. Uh, <laughs> I was really happy because of the keynote that I saw this morning because this is one of the topics that I keep talking about. And what I see at events, I mean, I visit a lot of different open source communities, and what I see is very often we don't think that talking about open source like at the keynote today, we don't think that that's interesting. Well, it is interesting, and hey, it's also necessary. We have to keep repeating this because in a community setting like this, and we're actually dealing with humans, you have yeah. to repeat things and you have to remember that things take time. Uh, so, you know, if you go out there and you keep talking to businesses, I think it's a really good idea. And then, yes, tell them your message, then listen to what they say back, try to modify your message next time and refine it and make it even better, but keep doing it because that's the only thing that's going to work. Keep it up. Resilience for the win. <laughs> so, uh, I couldn't agree more. Um, it, honestly, it does come back to communication. Um, when we, were start, we started the session talking about how to communicate this, we talked about onboarding, and it, it's back to how do we get out there? I mean, specifically, I'm about to call out the, the gentleman sitting next to you who's also part of the SCALE Consortium. <laughs> um, you're not getting out of here, Robert, without opening your mouth. <laughs> um, but what can organizations do? For instance, SCALE Consortium was founded specifically to talk to um, procurement of enterprise and stakeholders. So non-engineering topics mostly, non-topics around where are we going, but a topic of what's the benefit going to be to them. Part of that messaging could be, quite literally, you can contribute and that brings things back into your realm. You can be part of the roadmap. You're not going to get that from an international monolithic. You're just not going to. Uh, so I'm going to ask Robert, Robert, what did I miss? What did we on the panel miss? Um, what else can we do, whether it's scale consortium or in the enterprise space, to help? Um, your fault. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, one easy <laughs> thing, easy thing um, I thought about, it's, um, it's very easy, like being the role model. So um, we had this conversation that WordCamp, like WordCamp Europe has not a much budget, let's say that way. That, that would, could be better if we have more budget, we can do it differently and we can fund other people and some, something like that. So to solve that, um, like being the role model, Karim, you, you asked for that. <laughs> um, would be what if all agencies simply do not buy the normal price ticket, but they price a normal business price ticket. So we request, like let's say we, we request like a 300, 500 bucks ticket that we didn't buy, 
we want not be listed differently. We just want to be listed like in a way that we know who's not, who's coming, who's not doing that in our realm. So that we simply ask like other agencies, like you, you, you bought this. I saw you on the, on the attendee list with like, mm -hmm. you're not buying like the other ticket. Why? So in terms of like, um, simply being our own role model and, and our, with our peers, with the agencies and with like the other businesses, simply by um, like improving the world by ourselves and by then um, showing that to other people. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, I know it was discussed in Community Summit like 2013, 14, whenever that was, and it was put away at the time. I think it's a great idea to resurface. Uh, can I ask, because that was before my time, why it was put away? Do you know that? Former leadership that's not around thinking that that would communicate that there's different tiers of mm -hmm. attendees. It and Robert's idea solves that of saying, we're not asking to be yeah. listed. We're not asking for special recognition. Yeah. But we are different. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. Like I said, it's not an equal playing field. Like, um, I'm 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 coming here because my I'm fortunate enough to work for a company that is not only sponsoring or funding contributors. I learned that I find I find that brilliant to use the word funding against the word sponsoring. So I work for a company that is funding contributors, but I am also here because my company sent me here, mm -hmm. and uh, that is a very different, uh, uh, very different privileged position to other people. And so we are not. We are not equal, no. so we can then also pay different, different prices and maybe support other people. That uh, those voices need to be heard because they are valuable, so that they can show up where decisions are possibly being made. Excellent. Right, and we have now reached our time limit, so it's time to wrap up. And we've heard many very very interesting suggestions and actionable steps that we can take to increase transparency, to increase, uh, in to incentivize uh, sponsors to keep sponsoring. And I have a final question for you. Uh, for those of you who do organize and participate in community events, has anything during this talk um, inspired you to take action to uh, connect sponsors and contributors? <laughs> I've been inspired. I've been inspired by what Jorben said to not only work it back into the crowd favorite information that we're giving customers, but to give that back to the project to say yep. other people should put this in their decks of how they explain WordPress. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.